What's up you guys? Welcome back to another Code with Kylie video. So, so far we've learned about if statements, loops, functions, and now it's time to kind of put all that together into a little guessing game for either the computer to guess our secret number or us to guess the computer's secret number. So let's get started. All right, so in this video, first I'm gonna teach you guys how to implement a guessing game where the computer has a secret number and we are trying to guess that secret number. So the first step is actually having the computer generate a secret number for us to guess. And in order to do that, we're going to import random. Whenever we call import random, it actually goes to this package that comes with Python and it says, hey, all of these functions that are here like make these accessible in our script so that we can call these functions. So for example, in order to get a random number, something like random.randint might be very applicable because it returns a random integer n such that a is less than or equal to n, less than or equal to b. So a and b are the parameters of this function and we need to pass in arguments. I'm gonna define a function and I'm gonna define this function, let's say, guess. I'm going to make x a parameter so that we can pass that into this random get number function. So first we need to get the random number. And our random number, well, we're going to use random dot and then rand int, which is exactly what we saw down here. Let's make it between one and x. Okay, so now basically what this is going to return is a random number for us to guess. Okay, what's our second step here? Our second step is once the computer has a random number, we need to guess, right? We need to guess in terminal and input what our guess of the number is. And then the computer will tell us whether it's too high, too low, or if we've guessed the number correctly. I need to keep looping until I get the right answer, right? So that sounds like a job for loops. And basically, since we don't have a predefined universe to iterate over, we're gonna use a while loop. So Let's insert while in there. And now in this while loop, we need an expression here, right? And now for this expression, when do we want to stop this loop? We want to stop it when our guess number equals the random number. So that means our expression should be something along the lines of guess does not equal random number, then we want to iterate over some things. Now we need to actually define this guess and we're not gonna make a guess up here because we're just trying to initialize the variable, tell Python that this variable exists so that we can go back and change it later. So after random number, I'm gonna say guess equals zero, right? Because we don't want our guess to ever accidentally equal that random number. And here, if guess is zero, well, random number is random.randint between one and x and that means that it will never be zero. So while the guess is not equal to the random number, we're going to get the user's guess. So guess equals input, guess a number. And we can even get a little fancier here between one and, so let's use an F string and we can do X. Let's just see what that looks like real fast. Let's call our function guess at the bottom of our script. And then let's just print our guess. Let's see what happens when we run this. All right, so if we run this, pick guess a number between one and 10, let's do five. Okay, so we've printed the number, right? And I'm just gonna cast this as integer because I want my guesses to be integers. So what do we have so far? The computer has said, okay, I've gotten a random number. And now we've set up this loop where I can keep guessing until I guess the right number. But that's no fun, right? We kind of want the computer to give us some feedback, give us some clues into what's right and what's wrong. So that means that I'm gonna use some if statements. And these if statements are gonna tell me, hey, you're kind of high, kind of low, or, oh, maybe you've gotten it. All right, so let's add these if statements in. So if our guess is less than our random number, then we can print, sorry, guess again, too low. 
All right, but then else if our guess is greater than our random number, then we can print, sorry, guess again, too high. And then if it's not less than, if it's not greater than, that means it's just right. It's in that Goldilocks zone, right? And that means that you have guessed the jackpot. You have guessed that random number. And so what do we do then? Well, we actually don't have to do anything because remember this loop? While the guess does not equal the random number, it does all of this. But as soon as your guess equals a random number, so once you've input this guess, we don't hit any of these if statements. So then we come back to while the guess does not equal the number, but now your guess equals the random number. So it actually breaks out of this loop, meaning that at the very end, I can print, yay, congrats, you have guessed the number. And you know what? We can even just toss in our random number in there. So let's use our F string again. Yay, congrats, you have guessed the number, random number, correctly. All right, are we ready to play? So if we go to terminal, let's run our script. Okay, guess a number between one and 10. Um, I'm gonna do four. Okay, it was too high, so maybe two? too low. All right, so that means if four is too high, if two is too low, it has to be three, right? Wow, look at that. I've guessed the number three correctly. Woohoo! All right, so we talked about earlier how the computer is guessing our number, but we can also do the complete inverse of that function we can come up with a secret number and we can have the computer try to guess it. So now I'm gonna create a new function called computer guess of x. All right, and in this function, let's think about what we actually have to do. So I have a secret number and I'm not gonna tell the computer what the secret number is, right? That basically means the computer has a range of numbers to work with, a minimum and a maximum, a low and a high. Okay, so that means let's set the low and the high initially because we know what that is without even having to loop over anything. So I'm gonna say low, the lower bound is one and the high is X because we do have that entire range between one and X to work with initially until the user can provide some feedback. We need to be able to tell the computer if it's too high, too low, or if they've guessed correctly, which means that let's initialize a feedback variable. All right, feedback. And at first, there aren't any guesses, nothing's too high, nothing's too low. So just like how we initialize guess to be zero, let's initialize this to an empty string. And now, basically we wanna loop over this feedback expression. So while this feedback expression does not equal what we're gonna make it represent when it's correct, let's do C, because C for correct. So while this feedback does not equal C, well, the first thing I need the computer to do is to guess a new number. So I'm gonna make the guess random. I'm gonna use random.randint again. And this time we're going between low and high. Now we don't want it to always be, to be between one and X, right? Because we wanna be able to kind of change these bounds according to the user's feedback. Because you know that if something is too high, then anything above that, we can kind of stop considering. And then if it's too low, anything below that, we can stop considering. So that's why I'm passing in these low and high values into this rand int so that we can guess a new number between the bounds that we know has to be correct. Okay, so we have a guess and now we're trying to ask the user for feedback. Hey, is our guess right or is it wrong? So here I'm gonna do feedback equals and let's do a user input. Is so I'm gonna use an F string again so I can put this variable inside my string is guess too high and let's make that H, okay? Too low, and that's gonna be L or correct. And that of course is C. The user is gonna input H, L, or C. I have these uppercase letters here, this lowercase up here. I'm just gonna make this input lowercase. 
So adding that dot lower at the end is gonna take whatever this string is from the input and just lowercase it. So H, L, and C are all lowercase. If we try to compare a capitalized letter to its lowercase letter, it actually does not come out to be equal. So that's why I'm adding this lower in there. Let's look at our different cases again. So if feedback is H. So basically we're saying, okay, if it's too high, then that means we want to adjust our upper bound. Because if our guess is too high, like, you know, if we're guessing out of 10 and we guess eight, the other person says, oh, that's too high. That means that nine and 10 cannot be the numbers. That would mean that we need to adjust our upper bound. Our upper bound is actually going to be what we just guessed minus one because for example if we guess eight then we know it's between one and seven if eight is too high and now if the feedback is l we know that our low bound has to be guess plus one right because it can't be that low number and of course we can make that an lf lf makes it a little bit cleaner because feedback can only be h or it can be l like it can't be both of them and of course, if it's correct, we don't have to have an if statement for that because our while loop kind of takes care of that. So at the very end, of course, when we exit our while loop, that means that the computer has guessed our number correctly. Print, yay, the computer guessed your number. Uh, let's put the number in there. Correctly. And so I'm gonna put guess in this F string because, so that means that outside of this for loop, this variable guess is actually the last thing that the computer had guessed, which means that, you know, if it's correct, then that is our secret number. All right, so basically one other thing that I've noticed is random.randint will actually throw an error if low and high are the same number. So we can do a couple of things. We could theoretically put this statement up here that prevents this loop from continuing if low equals high, because if low and high are the same number, that means that you've narrowed it down, right? If you're saying eight is too low and your new low is nine, and then you're saying 10 is too high, so then your new high is nine, well, that means that the computer has actually narrowed down the number to nine. But if we break too early, so if we're saying and low does not equal high, then we don't actually iterate over this loop when our low is nine and our high is nine, right? We just break and we say, oh, the computer gets your number correctly. But the thing is, we actually want the user to say that the computer has chosen it correctly. So that's why we can't actually have that statement in there. Instead, what we want is we wanna say, if low does not equal high, then our guess is a random number between low and high, Otherwise, so this means if low does equal high, otherwise our guess is equal to one of them. So let's just say low. I mean, it doesn't really matter. This could also be high because low is equal to high. All right, so then our feedback actually puts this number into here and it prompts the user to say, hey, that's, that's right. So then at the very end, we're saying, okay, the computer guessed your number, guessed correctly. All right, let's try this. Five. Oh shoot, I need to come up. Uh, let's say our new secret number is six. So that's too low. Seven. Oh, that's too high. Six. Okay, that's correct. Yay. And you know, we can even play this with like a thousand. All right, so for our secret number, let's actually do the price of Ethereum, which is approximately 392. Okay, so Python 3 main dot pi. 640, that's too high, too low, too high, too low, too high, close, we're getting closer. Ooh, 393, that's a little bit too high, too low, 392. Woohoo, the computer guessed our number correctly. Look at that, the computer has guessed our number correctly. All right, so that's it. Just using some functions and some while loops, we were actually able to get our computer to guess our random number and for us to be able to guess our computer's random number. So now when we're bored, we can play this guessing game. Woohoo!